What we what what I find interesting though, and what Lyle uh, ends on, is uh, he doesn't say this, but I think what he's getting at is oftentimes we let the critic get away with too much, right? We mm-hmm. we we argue at a level of evidence when we should be arguing at a worldview level, a presuppositional level. For instance, the critic has raised the issue of contradiction, right? The Bible has contradiction, right? And Lyle rightly points out uh, uh, there's a profound irony in the critic's list of supposed Bible contradictions. The critic is is providing this list presumably to uh, convince people that the Bible is wrong. So his argument, he says, could go something like this. Contradictions are always wrong. The Bible has contradictions. Therefore, the Bible is wrong. Well, okay, all right, that (laughs) might be the case. But here's the problem, right? Uh, He says, you realize that premise one in the above argument, contradictions are always wrong, is a biblical truth, Mm -hmm. right? In other words, you know, uh, the uh, contradiction is one of the major laws of logic, right? And so what we need to do sometimes in these situations is step back. And we need to ask the the critic, all right, fine, why is it wrong? Why are contradictions wrong? In fact, how do you justify the laws of logic in general? Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. And so we step back and, you know, now we have an answer as Christians, right? We can say that the laws of logic reflect the way that God thinks, right? So, um, you know, we have an answer for this. Uh, the basic laws of logic are, you know, are, um, are clear. They're, they're part of the biblical truth because they're based on the character of God. Right? Laws of logic are God's standards for thinking. Uh, and so, um, you know, since God is unchangeable, sovereign, immaterial being, his thoughts would necessarily be abstract, universal, and unthinking, uh, and unchanging. Mm-hmm. Right? So that's, that's, and so just as God's character is characterized like that and he's characterized like that, his various standards for thinking is characterized like that. In other words, they're not made out of matter. They are. Uh, they, they apply everywhere and at all times. But we need to ask the critic, why do they think? What is their reasoning for holding to the to laws of logic? Yeah. Right. Rational reasoning would be impossible without the laws of logic, and the laws of logic would not exist without the biblical God. Mm-hmm. Right. So just just like uh, someone who claims. Uh, uh, oh, um, uh, I'm trying to think of uh, uh, Dawkins. Uh, Daw- Dawkins is a pure naturalist. He says that there's nothing that could possibly exist outside of nature, uh, and and the physical you know, universe. Yeah, what what kind of what you see and feel and touch and smell is is what you get. However, we run into an issue when you then say, okay, well, what about the laws of logic? Because how do you see, smell, taste, and touch <laughs> the laws of logic? Yeah. Well, even within his own worldview, he cannot account for uh, uh, those laws or things like morality. Uh, you know, should I cheat on my wife? Should I kill somebody? Um, th- there's no, there's, there's no materialistic, uh, substance you can kind of point to that says, uh, you yeah, know, th- this, this, one action is right and one action yeah. is wrong. They're all actions. They, they are a, actions. From yes. a naturalistic point of view. Mm-hmm. And, and the only way, I mean, you could say, well, I don't like, you know, <laughs> right. that sort of thing. But, you know, what makes it this particular action a bad or a good action or something like that, right? Mm-hmm. That's, that's the issue. And so you kind, of, you kind of have to take a step back and ask them to defend their worldview really is what we're getting at here. Right, right. right. Yeah. So even, even with this contradiction uh, the, the, or this uh, the statement about the law of non-contradictions, you can ask them, well, how, how do you know that? Uh, but, you know, by... by by, you know, what, what what application or what are you appealing to that says I can prove that the law of contradiction, the law of non-contradictions is true? Well, for them just to go, well, I just know it. Well, you could just take the same approach and say, well, I, I, I know it too and I have a different reason. So yeah. I just know that it's God that causes yeah. us to be able to appeal to the law of non-contradictions. So y- you're, you're just appealing to personal experience um, isn't really going to cut it because, again, people have different experiences. And in fact, uh, postmodernism um, kind of hinges on that. And so uh, a true postmodernist uh, who uh, adheres to his own uh, worldview would say, you're right, and 
also I can't prove one way or the other if the law of non-contradiction is accurate. So it, it, w- even with within that mindset there, um, you know, it, it, is it is it true for me and true for you? Yes. Well, there's a positive statement as well. So even even when you approach a um, person who's trying to get away from uh, standardizations of truth and, and, and they're trying to say, oh, you know, here's a third option. Even within their uh, presuppositional worldview, they're, they're failing to adhere to their own uh, worldview. So they're being inconsistent and inconsistency is a sign of a failed argument. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so what you can also say is, um, you know, um, so basically you were right. saying they can't really appeal to their experience. Right. I just know it. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> because uh, we could, if, if that's the case, that's clearly an argument stopper. Mm-hmm. Right. That what's, what's, how, you know, how do you just know it? And why do you just know it? And why do you know how, okay, you may know it now. Will you, will it be the same in the future? Mm-hmm. Right.